it's day 36 and we have our first leaf. I'm not sure whether this counts as a cotyledon or is it a true leaf or what. Um, we'll know more in the coming days. And you know it's kind of curled up but uh, it's otherwise a beautiful leaf and it's going to start photosynthesizing. And this plant is going to get a big head start on all the others. Number two here is also doing well. It still has that bizarre loop here, but uh, it has a first leaf unfurling. So it's just a little bit behind. What's new is there's a bud seemingly developing here, and this was all, you know, the dead layer, the rotting layer. So I think after a fungicide treatment, uh, basically that solved the problem, and this is going to continue to develop. It's a good thing I let it dry out a little, and I think there you have somewhat of a root, and maybe a shoot system will bust out here. So it's very interesting. I think these will still become two plants. The macro picture here is that the soil is still very wet and these two plants are coming along nicely along with a third one that's still basically just a conical shoot uh, at the 12 o'clock position. So there are springtails and maybe some fungal gnats buzzing around because I just layered sand over the soil of the honeydew experiment. So that's a much bigger pot. I think it'll solve the problem um, within a few days or at least reduce it by 95% according to uh, many online sources. So I want to try that here as well because I think the sand will be good for wicking away moisture from the wet soil that never seems to be able to dry out. It'll also provide for a cover against such pests. So maybe it'll get rid of the springtails, uh, suppress them, and the fungal gnats. So my only concern is I don't want a thick layer of sand to bury everything and prevent photosynthesis in potential new buds. So, you know, that could be a problem. But I basically want to give these a little bit more time before I layer on the sand and uh, solve the bug problem. Okay, it's day 38. And as you can see, this most dominant ginger plant is developing very, very nicely. It has two unfurled leaves, roughly, and I think the way this works is basically the shoot apical meristem is buried far below at the bottom of this tube, maybe, and new leaves just keep funneling up through. So it's not really a stem at this point, it's just a bunch of uh, curled up leaves. So that's a pretty good design. It ensures that the shoot apical meristem is very well protected. Uh, the design of this is far different from that of honeydew, which is a fast growing vine. This is a very slow growing plant. So, you know, it needs evolutionary defenses to not get eaten very quickly. So this central rhizome cutting has a well-developed plant too. And this one is doing well as well. And there's another bud that has potential to become another plant, but it's just kind of sitting there, not doing all that much. So as you can see, there are some tiny little springtails running around. Or it looks a little different, it doesn't look as white as the other ones were. So it could be just another species, or... I don't know what fungal gnat larvae look like, uh, but I'm assuming they're kind of like worms, maybe? Maggots. So that's not it either. So I'm amazed to report that these have turned green. You know, they're starting to regenerate their meristems, their shoot systems. And it looks like this one has a bump that's headed skyward. So despite all that fungal rot and uh, near-death situation, they've managed to regenerate. This is amazing, but maybe not all that surprising because it has a rhizome cutting to derive, you know, all the micro and micronutrients it needs to regenerate. In my honeydew series, you know, basically those seeds are very vulnerable. And although honeydew can pump out 200 seeds after it's been consumed by a large animal, it basically needs all of those to get started right away in the soil in optimal conditions. Otherwise, they all die. As for this rhizome cutting, um, there's still no sign of development. It could be dormant for a very long time, you know. Uh, I think I'll... I've been spraying some water on all these places where there are rhizome cuttings, but, you know, that doesn't seem to be helping. 
so this probably just needs a really really long time so the potting mix seems to have dried out a lot it's still damp in some places on the surface but I'm dead sure that underneath it's very wet still so I think these two large plants can well relatively large can get all the water they need uh, they probably have robust and uh, deep root systems by now but the rest of these rhizome cuttings and including the two that haven't even erupted in any manner uh, those basically won't have enough water in this current state and that's why I've been spraying the top okay it's day 40 of this ginger germination experiment so most of the day these plants aren't in the direct sun although they will be pretty soon because they're growing taller they're kind of uh, shadowed by these two much taller pots this is only a 10 inch pot the others are 15 so there's been a lot of growth the leaves have unfurled and they look very nice although I do see a little bit of yellowing on let's see it's almost impossible to see in light this bright but you know kind of uh, on an edge right there so you know is that overwatering or is it natural I I really don't know this is the base of the tallest shoot system now amazingly the central rhizome in this pot has developed even more than the other one but if you look over here what's amazing is this thing is regenerating in seemingly three spots or at least two I think and even more amazing is that that bud that was next to this, if you look in the very first video, there was a bud here on the central rhizome cutting, or the one that ends up here. And it basically has sprouted. So I don't know what the capacity is of this thing to push through, you know, how many millimeters or centimeters of dirt it can make it through uh, before it exhausts its resources. But that's all from one very small rhizome cutting that had four buds on it so on the left here you have what was once the champion in height but it still has more development than this one in the middle this one in the middle is slower to develop I would say and it wins only in height it has a little kind of strange atypical development so here's a side view of that shoot system I was just talking about so with this rhizome cutting it's sort of the same story that one is green but it's pretty inactive whereas this one is developing quite nicely